All right, guys, we're going to move on to Unit 4 of the Algebra 1 Midterm Review for the 2022-2023 school year. And Unit 4 covers our solving linear inequalities and systems of linear inequalities. So first off, we need to know the difference between an equation and an inequality. The biggest difference is that an equation has one solution, while an inequality has many or infinite solutions. So let's graph a system of inequalities, and then we're going to identify a solution and a non-solution. So our first, equi or our first inequality here is y is greater than negative 1 half x plus 2. I'm going to start at the y-intercept of 2, go down 1 to the right 2. Or I can go up 1 to the left 2. And before I draw my line, I need to decide if this is going to be a solid or a dashed line. In this case, it's just greater than, so I am going to make a dashed line. Before I shade anything, I want to make sure I graph my second uh, linear inequality. So I'm starting at negative 1, and it has a positive 3 over 1 slope. So I'm going to go up 3 into the right one, or down 3 into the left one. This is a solid line because it's less than or equal to. And now I know I'm looking for the quadrant where we are greater than our dashed line, but less than, our solid, less than or equal to our solid line. So I need to be above that red line, below the green line. The only quadrant that satisfies this is this upper right-hand quadrant here. So now it says to determine a solution and a non-solution. Guys, first off, my favorite thing to look at is the origin. And in this case, the origin is not in my shaded region, so it is a non-solution. And then I can pick any point within that shaded region. How about I just pick the point 5, 3? But any point would do in that shaded region. Um, <clears throat> the intersection point would not be a solution in this case because I have the intersection of a dashed and a solid line. <clears throat> Therefore, that point will not be introduced because it does intersect with a dashed line. Now, number three says solve the inequality, then graph your answer on the number line. I want to isolate the variable m. So my first step is to subtract 7 from both sides. This gives me a negative 5m is greater than negative 15. Then I need to divide by a negative 5. But guys, when we multiply or divide by a negative number with inequalities... That means we have to flip our inequality symbol. So this is going to give us that m is less than 3. Let's say I have 1, 2, 3, 4 here. So therefore, this is going to be an open circle facing to the left because it's now less than 3. <clears throat> For 4, I'm going to look at the graphs below, and uh, they show a relationship between x and y. We're going to state if the following points are solutions in the graph. So this first one says, look at the point 2, 1. So I'm going to go right 2 and up 1. Is it a solution? Absolutely. Then I'm going to look at the point negative 1, 1. So that falls on a solid line, so it is a solution. For the second one, I've got is the point 1, negative 1. So to the right 1, down 1. Is that a solution? Well, it actually falls on the dashed line, so it is not a solution. And then I have the point 3, negative 2. That falls not in the shaded region, so it is not a solution as well. Number 5 wants us to rewrite this in slope-intercept form, which is the same thing as solving for y. So I'm going to subtract a 3x from both sides. That leaves me with negative 5y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 10. And then I'm going to divide by a negative 5. But remember, if I divide by a negative 5, I've got to flip my inequality symbol. So y is now greater than or equal to. Well, three divided, negative 3 divided by negative 5 doesn't simplify. So I'm just going to leave that as 3 over 5x. My negatives do cancel each other out. 10 divided by negative 5 is going to give me a negative 2. So this would be my slope-intercept form of that linear inequality.
Now, number six says determine whether the point val or whether the following points are solutions to the inequality 10x plus 8y is less than or equal to 20. Easiest way to do this is to just substitute these values in for x and y. So I'm going to have 10 times 8, because that's my x value, plus 8 times negative 2 is less than or equal to 20. If I put that in my calculator, I've got 10 times 8 plus 8 times negative 2. That's going to give me 64. Is 64 less than or equal to 20? That is not true, so it's not a solution. Same thing here. I've got 10 times 6 plus 8 times negative 3. And I need to determine if that is less than or equal to 20. So that's 10 times 6 plus 8 times negative 3. That gives me 36. 36 is not less than or equal to 20, so that is not a solution. Last but not least, I've got 10 times negative 4 plus 8 times 5. And I need to determine if that is less than or equal to 20. And if I put that in the calculator, I've got 10 times negative 4 plus 8 times 5. That gives me the value of 0. Is 0 less than or equal to 20? Absolutely it is. So this would be our solution. Number seven says, given the following system of equations, what would the solution for this be? So if I'm looking at this here, I've got seven equals seven. Seven always equals seven, so this is going to be an infinite amount of solutions. And we had a little uh, misprint here, so we need to graph the linear inequality. So go on to page eight. This first one says y is greater than one half x plus one. So I'm going to start at one, go up one to the right two. Or I could go down one to the left two. Guys, this is going to be a dashed line because it is just greater than. And I'm going to shade above this line, so it's going to be this region. My next one is x is less than 3. So I've got to find where x is 3, which is here. And this means that for every y value, x is going to equal 3. But it's not, it's, or it's going to be less than 3. So I'm going to have a vertical line where x is 3. And the x values that are less than 3 are to the left. So my shaded region is all the values on the left. My last one says y is greater than or equal to negative 8. And so that means I'm going to have a horizontal line. It's going to be a solid horizontal line because it's equal to it. And I want everything greater, so it's going to be the region above that line. Number 9 says create the inequalities based on the below and then solve for the variable. So I have a number subtracted by 6 is at most 4. Well, a number is not defined, so I can just say x minus 6. At most means it could equal it, but it can't be any bigger than it, so it has to be less than the value of 4. Then it wants me to solve for it, so I'm going to add 6 to each side. So therefore, x is less than or equal to 10. My next one says 20 increased by 3 times the number is at least 30. So I have 20 plus 3 times the number is going to give me 3x. At least means it could equal it, but it needs to be greater than or equal to the value of 30. I'm now going to subtract 20 on each side. That's going to give me that 3x is greater than or equal to 10. And I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. So x is greater than or equal to 10 thirds. Number 10. Now, I'm going to show you a testing strategy here real quick. All of these are graphed in the same spot, so we really just need to pay attention to our inequality symbols. I have a less than or a less than or equal to symbol, so I know it can't be A. And I need a shade below both of these values. Well, B is shaded above the solid line, so it's not that one. D is shaded above both lines, so it's not that one. So the only solution that can be true is C. And guys, that is all the material from Unit 4.